Okay, to start this, we're going to look at some of the biochemical tests. This is going to be the part one series. I'm just going to cover six or seven um, tests that we're going to um, you know, most commonly use in microbiology labs. So to get started, we're going to look at a urease tube. So the purpose of a urease tube is to uh, differentiate or microorganisms based on urease production. The enzyme urease will hydrolyze urea yielding ammonia. Ammonia is alkaline and the presence of the pH indicator of phenol red will change the color of the media from light orange to an intense pink color. So if you look at the picture, you're going to notice a, um, these two tubes are orange, even though one in the background is orange as well. Those are both negative, and then the pink is going to indicate a positive. So Next we have an EMB plate, which is also uh, called an eosinmethylene blue auger. So this test, is, uh, its purpose is to uh, select microorganisms based on their ability uh, to grow in presence of eosin Y and methylene blue. And this also differentiates microorganisms by their ability to vigorously ferment lactose and produce acid. So in this photo here, um, this is E. coli. So E. coli produces a metallic green sheen um, on an EMB plate. So the normal, I guess, um, non-E. coli uh, coliform, sorry, I can't talk today, are going to just produce like a purple type color and if it's a negative it's going to be pink or col colorless colonies and no lactose ferment fermentation will occur. So this is a great test if um, you do wind up having E. coli because it's pretty um, definitive. So moving on, I don't really have a whole lot on uh, menthol salt auger but um, I will, will read you what I have. The differential ingredient in MSA or menthol salt auger is the sugar mannitol. Organisms capable of using mannitol as a food source will produce acid byproducts of fermentation that will lower the pH of the media. The acidity of the media will cause the pH indicator phenol red to turn yellow. Staphylococcus aureus is capable of fermenting mannitol. So if you look at the picture, this yellow right here is going to be the growth of the organism Staphylococcus aureus or S. aureus and it also um, produces that acid production. Next we have oxicillin resistance. Um, this is also used to determine, uh, this test is to, used to determine methicillin resistant staph aureus so, uh, reg from regular staph aureus. So um, you have your ranges here of susceptible and resistant and uh, that's just all I'm going to show um, on this slide. But if you look here you can see how the um, oxicillin is preventing the MRSA um, from growing. So this is going to be a classic case of antibiotic resistance. TCBS is next um, on my slide. So this TCBS stands for thiosulfate citrate bile sucrose. And this auger is used to um, differentiate organisms of the Vibrio species. So this yellow here is going to be positive um, in the indication of Vibrio cholera. Um, very, very good test if you're trying to figure out um, the differences between um, the Vibrio species. Now, if Vibrio parahemolyticus was growing on this auger, it just would have a green um, color. The colonies would be like a greenish type um, color, but um, this is a really, really good test if you're trying to, like I said, figure out which Vibrio species that you have. Next, we have the Mac auger plate. I uh, also don't have a whole lot of here, I just wanted to show you the positive and negative. So the positive is going to be the pink on the left side here, and on the right is going to be the negative. And also, if you look at this bottom um, background photo, this is also a MAC plate. Um, my lab partner streaked that, I am not that good at streaking, but, um, but yeah. So um, the, the MAC auger plate is used to determine lactose production as well as the EMB plate. Next we have the SMAC auger plate. Or the sorbitol um, McConkey auger, so it's like a, an upgrade, I guess, um, used for determining detection of E. coli 0157H7. This is also a great test um, if you're trying to differentiate your E. coli species as well. So if you look here, the positive is going to be the pink, um, and the negative are going to be the colorless. My last slide here is going to be hemolysis. Like I said, I didn't want to do a whole lot here, but um, I'm going to go over this real quick. So alpha hemolysis is going to be incomplete hemolysis of, or greening um, of the media. Beta, which is here, the Greek symbol for beta. Complete hemolysis or clearing of the media. You can see here, if you 
if you get your plate and hold it up to the light and you can completely see through the plate, um, that is definitely a case for beta. And then you have your non-hemolytic or your gamma hemolysis here. So I just want to make this video very short. This is going to be part one series. So I'm going to add more videos uh, in the next couple of weeks. And I uh, hope you all stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching.